Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I wanted to share some information about a something, well, it's a subject we talk about a lot, um, called the leaky gut. And um, Dr. Alessio Fasano has done a lot of the research into leaky gut, and I continue to find it quite fascinating, but I learned some new information that, that I thought you would find fascinating. Uh, so it begins with the story that the, the gene that makes uh, this substance called zonulin is only present in humans. Um, even other primates that some people believe we're related to do not make this gene. So it's kind of interesting from that viewpoint. And then, so if we make this gene, what's it for? And um, the body's pretty brilliant. So usually it, it, it has a reason for <laughs> pretty much everything that occurs. And um, this gene uh, is responsible for uh, the production of zonulin, and zonulin is found in the lining uh, of, they're called enterocytes, but it's the cells that line the intestine. And what it does is that if the, the gut is exposed to a bacteria like E. coli or salmonella or, or something of that sort, it creates leakiness, but the kind of leakiness it's, it's designed to create is that water can rush in to the gut, to the intestine, and flush out that bacteria to, of course, move it out of your system faster so it can do less damage. So zonulin, uh, the gene that makes it, has a survival response. So sounds like a good idea, right? Uh, if it was just located to uh, that response with bacteria, it would be great. Interestingly enough, what Zo Dr. Uh, Fasano discovered is that um, <clears throat> gliadin, the protein, in wheat that we talk about so much, uh, sometimes we call it gluten, but the actual protein is called gliadin, it mimics the same effect that causes zonulin to create the leakiness when a bacteria is present. But it's just the presence of gliadin, the protein in wheat, that's causing this. So not a bad bacteria, just you ingesting wheat uh, or gluten. So the other thing that occurs is, is not only is this supposedly a food, and not a bacteria, but the leakiness goes two ways. So instead of just water coming in, the leakiness when, when gluten is ingested goes two ways, meaning that things leak out of the intestine as well as leaking in. So what's key about that is that there are certain undigested proteins, there are certain bad guys like legitimate bacteria, parasites, etc., that we don't want leaking out into our bloodstream. We would prefer if they stayed in the gut and be excreted. But because of zonulin, this leakiness occurs and things can go in, things can come out. And um, it's interesting to note that it's the presence of leaky gut that's been associated with autoimmune disease. And autoimmune diseases are not present, as Dr. Fasano pointed out, in other primates. So this zonulin, leaky gut, autoimmune disease connection is a very, very strong one. And we've talked about this before. We've talked about the importance of handling your leaky gut. But we mostly talk about it in relationship to having gluten sensitivity, having celiac disease, because if you're a celiac, you're five times more likely or uh, five times more um, intensity is present in this leakiness than if you don't have celiac disease. But the fact that gliadin causes the leakiness with the presence of zonulin occurs regardless of whether, according to Dr. Fasano, whether you have celiac disease or gluten sensitivity or none of the above, meaning that gliadin is causing this reaction regardless. So um, depending on your genetic makeup, if you have um, one copy of this gene, two copies of this gene, um, there are some humans that, that don't have a copy of the gene, is my understanding. Um, but for the most part, this reaction does occur regardless of, as I said, whether you have celiac disease or not. So it goes back to our last video where we were talking about something called wheat germ agglutinin, uh, a part of the wheat molecule that another researcher felt that all of us react to. Once again, regardless of w not celiac, not gluten sensitivity, just ingestion of wheat having a negative reaction. So here's another ingestion of wheat having a negative reaction and um, in this leakiness. And it's, it's apropos that we discuss this because the increased incidence of autoimmune disease is something that 
we really have to address in our country because the escalation is, is rather frightening and these diseases are, are pretty miserable. So um, nothing you can do about your genetics, but there's certainly something about, you know, you have the control of what you put in your mouth. So we're learning more and more about wheat and gluten not being our friend and, um, and, and maybe for no one, right? We've, all, we've always talked about the fact, or at least I've always talked about the fact that we can't properly digest it. Humans can't properly digest um, the proteins in wheat. So is it really food? So not only can't we digest it, if it was just fiber and excreted out the other end, no big deal, but between the wheat germ of gluten in and now the zonulin effect that creates the leakiness, there's more, more deleterious here than than certainly anything beneficial when it comes down to that grain wheat. So uh, maybe not your friend, something to really consider, um, but I thought it was interesting as far as the, the um, genetics of it all and why it was created. It was actually created as a protective mechanism to have this gene, but then we started eating wheat and we saw the negative side of, this, of these genetics. So I hope you found it interesting. And uh, Happy New Year, by the way. It's January 2014 as I'm taping this. And uh, please let me know if you have any questions, if you have any health concerns that I can assist you with. I'm always here to help. And until next time, I wish you very good health.